So Lars, um, he does have um, two non-displaced fractures in his rib. Um, the concern is basically he has to get to a point where he's pain-free, and he also has to get to the point where, which could take anywhere from 10 to 14 days to where he can't have any like traumatic um, injury to that area. So obviously that's the why you won't see him playing in the field because you don't want him diving. Um, and then of course from a swing standpoint, it's just as, as tolerated. So over the next um, course of 10 to 14 days, we'll just monitor, see where he's at. And then, um, you know, at that point, we'll know if it's more of a concern for opening day or not. But right now, we're going to be patient. It's good to know why why the pain was lingering. I mean, now you get an answer and you get a, a plan going forward, I guess. Well, I think like, what, you know, originally what happened, we didn't know if it was an oblique or if it was uh, something to the ribs. And now we know. So. Is it on the right side or left side? Do you know? Uh, boy, I should know this. I know. So is he going to be doing anything in that 10 to 14 day period or is it going to pretty much be shut down? Uh, no, he can still like move around, but um, it's really just as tolerant. John is a guy who he gets a lot of swings in the off season. I mean, you're probably not worried about where he is. Uh, he, he's a guy who you know puts in the time, it seems like. Uh, there's not a certain number at bats I guess he needs in spring training. I mean, obviously, I, I would say like, you know, this isn't great news, yeah. but uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're not overly concerned when you think about it in terms of the season. Well, uh, an ability is availability, is I believe the phrase that you guys always say. He's had a few injuries here that are on the field that, I mean, you just kind of have to chalk up to events. And mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you want to figure out ways to protect one's body as best you can, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly in this situation, he ran into a wall, and here we are. Yeah, he, and he fell off a ball last year and got exactly. hit by the other this kind of thing. What, uh, when you say as tolerated, I mean, is that, are swings as tolerated? Yeah, right now he won't be swinging a bat, but okay. I think over the course of the next week or so, we'll see how he feels, and then that might be something that can, that door could be opened. One guy's misfortune is usually another guy's fortune. How, how impressed are you with the way Alec Burleson's handled the bat so far uh, this spring? Well, he's had a very impressive camp, for mm -hmm. sure, um, and, and happy for him. and. You know, he's probably going to get an opportunity now, given the injuries we have. Does this open up a way for Victor Scott the second? You know, I think we have to be a little bit more patient with that. Um, clearly, he's opened up some eyes early on, um, but we have still three weeks of camp left, so a lot of time to still make some judgments and decisions. And so we'll see how things go. What, and how encouraged were you by Sonny being able to throw from 60 feet the other day? He came in on. The off day and get some rehab it's, it seems like things are trending in the direction you would like i think so but you know with with the time we have in front of us i think just rather than trying to to guess when it might be clear we'll see but the fact that he's being able to get on the field able to throw that is helpful realizing that there's like you said still three weeks what's the level of concern at least right now that the guy you had as your starting center fielder, Tommy, is still rehabbing, and now Lars, potentially, depending on what happens in the next 10 to 14 days, may not be there for opening day. Not ideal. Uh, so level of concern is real. Uh, but you always have to remind yourself that, you know, April 1 isn't the entire season either. So you know, being patient and, and getting these guys back to where we think they are best suited to be successful is more important than worrying about maybe some time missed. Do you have a you feel on Tommy Edmond at this point? Do, do you have a feel on Tommy Edmond at this point? I don't. Um, you know, we're still uh, hopeful he's progressing, but in terms of like when we might actually see him, I think it's still to be determined. You mentioned Burleson getting some more opportunities. Who follows him now as far as the rotation of, of outfielders that you have? Well, you know, we, we have some options that we could end up putting somebody from the infield out there too, but we're going to try to avoid that if possible. Um, you know, obviously DC is now going to get a lion's share. Um, we had Walker penciled in in right field from day one, and so now we'll just sort of see how that unfolds. But uh, you know, clearly a, a guy like uh, Siani, uh, Siani, I'm sorry, is uh, someone like that. You know, going to get a lot of opportunity now. John Siani had a good day the other day. He threw out a runner at home. What, what have you seen from him? As well, I think he's an elite defender. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think like. The, from an offensive standpoint, you know, there's some things he is starting to work on and, and uh, to try to help us. But I do think, like, 
just from a pure center fielder standpoint, like he can do that job. Donovan's a left fielder for you, so that kind of opens up he, DH spot a little bit. He, he could. You know, coming off the injury he had, we're, we're, we're reluctant to necessarily put him in the outfield, but you may see him getting some work in there over the course of the next couple of weeks, just in case. So that could change your look at your bench or your DH spot, it right? Could. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you need to go get another outfielder, or do you feel the need right now? Not yet. Um, obviously, I think you know as this camp unfolds, we'll see if that changes. Hey Mo, what uh, with Tommy? What, you've been through this a, a lot with various players. What's your sense of when you want to make a call on that for a hitter? What's fair um, as far as how much ramp up or game action a hitter needs? Well, if your question is, is do, like, how much time do we need before we decide if he's active for opening day or not? I mean, I don't think he's tracking in that right now, but okay. the bigger question for me is then how much longer are we waiting? That's what, okay, so you don't expect him on opening day at this point? I think right now that would be doubtful. Okay. This is why I ask. Okay. But we're still better, learning more. There's a better chance that Lars is back by opening day than Tommy. I feel that's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. What we got? You're going to be without Lars for however long. How, how much of a hit is that for you? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a hit. Um, this is a guy we're counting on, and he has a little bit of a setback in how we're going to look at spring. Um, so we'll see how he comes out of the next couple of weeks. But uh, he'll be able to swing as tolerated. Um, but yeah, he's definitely a guy that we're, we're counting on to help us quite a bit. What's your level of concern with two thirds of your projected starting lineup may not be there on opening day, or for time for now anyway? Two thirds? Outfield. Two thirds of your starting outfield. Outfield, yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously not ideal. And uh, the next man up, um, you guys will get an opportunity during that time, and that's uh, that'll be good for them. But it's definitely you're wanting Eddie and Newt to be healthy. Those are two guys that contribute a, a ton on, on both sides of the baseball. Good defenders. Um, they add a ton of value on the offensive side. So um, we'll be all right. What do you see getting the, uh, the line share of the opportunity, as you put it? And just with the we'll continue to rotate the guys the way they've been doing it. Yeah. The uh, Joe Burleson out there, really, does DH become in play? Does Donovan become a left fielder at times here? How does? Yeah, we're discussing all the things that you're probably bringing up, bringing up at the moment. So we'll take a deeper look at it and uh, see as we get closer and understand Right now, we have no idea how long it would be. Right. Um, as we get closer and we have a better understanding about his body's responding to the progression, then we'll we'll start to fill in the gaps. You talked about, I mean, Dylan as the fourth outfielder move around a bit, obviously. With Tommy, there's the opening in center. Will Dylan still move around some? Uh, yeah, he has to still stay sharp at all positions, so we'll continue to move him around. Well, can Donovan play the outfield, or are you guys trying to stay away from that right now? Or He can. Uh -huh. Is that something you're trying to avoid for now? With um, him recovering? Our progression is to keep him on the dirt um, for the time being and then giving him some time in the outfield. Uh, that wouldn't be till next week was our kind of okay. how we were thinking through it. Okay. Um, and we'll stick to that at the moment. Yeah. How happy are you with the way Burleson's handled the bat so far? You mentioned yeah. yesterday. Yeah, he can hit, man. He does a really nice job offensively. Um, just takes a really good at bat. Uh, the two walks the other day are equally as important for him because we've talked a decent amount about him not just putting balls in play, but swinging when he can do damage and uh, taking two walks and hitting the double is a really good day for him. Yeah. How, how have you seen his progress in the outfield? Like, I mean, obviously that was a focus for him in the offseason, just being able to play that a little bit better. Um, he's done a nice job out there. Um, I don't think he's gotten a ton of plays that have tested the limits, but everything hit out there up to this point, he seems very comfortable. But it was a point of emphasis this offseason for him, and he worked hard at it. Where, was he, where, where do he need to make strides? Most of it was just on first step and routes. Needs. Yeah, and um, part of it was just being lighter on his feet, and he did a nice job of losing some weight and working on just getting off the ball better. So. Is Crawford still scheduled to be part of the weekend activities? Uh, yeah, he's going to hit live today, and then depending on how he comes out of this, he'll let us know what tomorrow looks like. 
you have starting pitchers for the next couple days? Or? I do. I do. Yeah, okay. I can give you the next three okay. or four. Right, that's good. Um, Siani. Yeah. I mean, he's a defensive whiz. Yeah. As you look through this and sort through the potential, because now you, I mean, you don't know if Lars will be available, but you prepare for every eventuality. What is a defensive guy? How does a defensive guy factor into that? Yeah, if you're talking about steady in the outfield, this is a guy that does that extremely well. I mean, he is a great defender, um, and he's showing us offensively what he's capable of doing when it comes down to taking a walk, laying down a bunt, stealing a base. Um, he had a really good day the other day, threw out a guy at home, laid down a bunt, um, stole a base. I mean, it's, uh, but from a defensive standpoint, he's a very good defender. Yeah, and that's true for all three. I mean, that's silly to say, but all three spy. He doesn't seem to be phased by anything. No, he can, he can yeah. play all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mo said that you're going to take a patient approach, continue to take a patient approach with Victor, but he has opened some eyes. Can he can he play his way into this thing? Uh, yeah, we'll continue to look at Victor, and um, he's had a really good spring. He's doing exactly what everybody said he's capable of doing. He's swinging the bat well. He's done a nice job left on left. Um, running the bases the way we expect them to, playing really good defense. So he'll continue to, to follow the schedule that he's been on, um, and we'll continue to lay eyes on it. Good deal. Thank you. You got it.